the title of the message uh, that the Lord gave me is Embrace Your Season. Embrace Your Season. Oh, uh, Lucy and baby Luke are with us tonight. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, and I want to start in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says in verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I'm reading out of the King James. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather the stones together. A time to embrace. That, there, that's where I got that word embrace. And a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. And I believe that each one of us, we go through seasons in our life. We go through um, going to school and getting an education. We go through uh, maybe a season of marriage and a season of having children. And then we, we also go through a season of different jobs and different positions uh, that we have in life. Uh, we also go through seasons of uh, spiritual growth. And, and so it's important to embrace that season that, that we are in. And first of all, we, we need to know what season we're in. What does the Lord want out of that season? And there's a group of uh, people, a tribe, uh, called the Sons of Issachar. And it's found in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. The sons of Issachar were full of wisdom and full of discernment. Now, I want to stop and just define that word discernment. Uh, discerning of spirits is a gift. It's being able to see into the spiritual realm I see angels, uh, demonic forces, and that's a gift from the Holy Spirit. Discernment comes from maturity. Maturity in your walk with the Lord. Maturity in your Christian growth. And, and this tribe of Issachar, they were, they were, they were wise and they were discerning. They knew what season the nation of Israel was in. And so we can have that same wisdom because in the book of James says, if you, if you lack wisdom, then you can ask for it. You can, because he's going to give it to you uh, without measure. He says that he's not going to hold back any wisdom from you. So you can be wise just by asking the Lord and then believing that he has given you wisdom. And that discernment is that, that growth in the Lord. And it comes from, from many different ways. And we're going to talk about those. And we're going to talk about how do you embrace your season. But first of all, we have to know what season we're in. And the, the sons of Issachar knew those seasons and those times. They had a, an understanding of the time that, that we were in. For instance, I just want to use this ex as an example because George is an economist and Brother Fred is an economist. And I don't know, George, if you under knew this or not, but God is an economist. Did you know that? Hallelujah. He's, he, isn't he? Yes, he is. He is an, econ he is an economist. And um, and so let's let's just 
get a little bit more information about these sons of Issachar, because to me, they are fascinating and interesting. And, and I just want to give you some background on the, this tribe. Jacob had two wives. He had Leah and he had Rachel. He loved Rachel. And he did not love Leah. And so when Leah had her sons, she, every one of her sons, she had nine sons for, for Jacob. And when she had those sons, she named them, gave them a prophetic name. And so that she could receive back what she felt like she didn't have with her husband, with Jacob. He didn't love her. And she knew that. And so the word Issachar, the son that was named Issachar, means bring a reward. And so that's exactly what happened with the tribe of Issachar. They were, they brought their reward back to their mother. And they were military leaders. They were financial leaders. They were agricultural leaders. For instance, um, in, in um, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verses 18 and 19, Moses gave this tribe, the tribe of Issachar, the, the Valley of Jezreel. And that valley was very fertile and very rich. And they, they became rich uh, through agriculture and through other means. They were traders. And, and so they were military leaders. They were financial leaders. And they were agricultural leaders. They had favor. They had favor. And they had much wisdom and much discernment. And so it says in, in Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. So as we are seeking what season we're in, then we also say, Lord, give us understanding. Give us knowledge of the season that we're going into. Now, this year is all about the newness of the Lord. Remember, God makes all things new in 2022. And so this is the year that people are going to enter into new seasons. For instance, I'm just going to use George and Joy uh, for an example here. Of course, Lucy is in a new season. She's in a, a new season of, of motherhood. She's in a new season of of coping and 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 working out a plan where she can be a a, a, a worker, a, a mother, a, a wife, uh, and so all of that is um, uh, what she's uh, going through right now. But Joy and George, you're entering into a new season, a new season of spiritual growth, and also a new season in your family. Sarah's at, at, at college and Grace is about to leave uh, to go for her training. I believe the end of October, is that right? October 30th. And so this is gonna be a new season for you and George. And, and what are you to do in this new season? And, and, and how can we make that season exactly what God wants? And so it's it's uh, it's going to be different not having uh, your children in in your house. One is at college, and one is um, working for United Airlines and flying everywhere. And and so it's going to to be a uh, a different season and a new season. And um, so the back to the sons of Issachar, they were in tune with God. Now that's going to be important for you to remember. You need to get on the same page with God. 
What does God want from you in this new season? You know, what is he, uh, what is he telling you to do? Uh, what is he telling you to study? For instance, there are times when the Lord has, has uh, spoken to me. Uh, I'm leading you into a new season of healing. And so I want you in the healing scriptures. I want you to study about healing. I want you to uh, begin to confess the scriptures. I want you to declare healing over individuals. I want you to go where people are sick and pray for them. See, all of that is, is what God will begin to share with you when you enter into that new season. Now, how do we stay in tune with God? I said, be on the same page with God. You know, let's let's uh let's go to uh first John two. I love the way Brother Fred teaches. He has a photographic memory and and just remembers all the scriptures. Uh that's a, a gift from, from the Holy Spirit. I'm in first John chapter two. Verse 20, it says, but you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. When you're entering into a new season in order to embrace or catch hold of that new season, you need to be on the same page with God. You need to be in tune with him. Well, how do you do that? It's through the Holy Spirit. It's through the unction of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is uh, this is First John chapter two verse twenty, and then let's go over to twenty seven verse twenty seven. It says, "But the anointing which you have received of Him abideth in you." So you have an anointing. You have an unction from the Holy Spirit that tells you this is. The season that I'm in, and this is what I feel like I need to be doing with my life. The anointing is the ability to do what God has assigned you to do. The anointing is the oil, the, the power of God. But the anointing which is in you, which you have received from him, abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. Now, this, this doesn't mean that you do not listen to uh, teachers and Bible studies, that you do not listen uh, to your pastor, that you do not listen to uh, evangelists or uh, ministers on TV. Um, it, that doesn't mean that you don't do that. What, what this means is that you're to listen to individuals that are bringing forth the word through the Holy Spirit. The anointed word. The anointed word. <clears throat> the anointed word. See, there's lots of ministers out there that are, they're, they're preaching things that sound good, but there's no power. There's no power there. There's no anointing there. There's no oil there. And so what we want to listen to is the anointed word Amen. of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, what does that do? The unction and the anointing keep us right there on the same page with God. And the sons of Issachar were right there. They knew what God was doing. And you can ask him, Lord, what are you doing in my life? What do you want to do in my life? And he'll tell you. He'll tell you all of a sudden, it'll just come, it'll come to you. Uh, it comes through the spirit and then into your thinking. Oh, I need to be praying more. Oh, I need to be studying the word more. Oh, I need to be going out and telling people about the Lord. Woo, hallelujah. So he will ex tell you exactly how to embrace that new season. Amen. Amen. You know, new seasons are not, they don't have to be scary. They don't have to be, you know, that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And that's so you can embrace the, the life, the Zoe, the Zoe, which is the life of God, 
you can you can embrace that Zoe. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So there are five things I want you to consider in this message tonight about embracing your new season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe every single one of you, every single one of you are embracing a new season of prosperity. Hallelujah. That's a prophetic word for every single, I, I receive it. Amen. I receive, I receive it. it. We are entering into a season of prosperity. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, and that's for the whole body of Christ. Why? Because the the wealth that has been has been stored up by the wicked is coming to those that are righteous. Yeah. Those that are doing the kingdom work, those that are those that are bringing people into the kingdom, uh, bringing healing, bringing deliverance, bringing uh, salvation, uh, bringing joy, bringing peace. Uh, th those are the people that are going to receive Amen. this prosperity. Amen. So I receive it in, in Jesus' name. We receive it in Jesus' you. name. You. you know, God knows what you need, George. God knows, Jenny, what you need. Hallelujah. He's the one that watches over you. Yes. It's not man. It's not your job. It's not your relatives. It's not your family. But it's God himself that watches over each one of us. Amen. And he knows what we need. So number one on my list to is how do we embrace the new season is through faith. That's number one on my list is through faith. And that's Mark chapter 11. Let's go over to Mark 11. We, I know that you know this scripture. You cannot get away from it. It's impossible to please God without faith. So it says in Mark chapter 11, starting in verse 22, have faith in God. Now, I love the way that that sentences have faith in God with the understood subject those of you that know grammar well there is an understood subject there meaning you you have faith in God but there's also another way of, of looking at this perceiving this and that is to have the faith of God remember Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says that we are to operate through the faith of Jesus Christ. There's something beyond your faith. Hallelujah. There's something beyond your faith. And that is the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's the kind of faith I want to operate in. Amen. And that's number one on the list because without faith, it's impossible to please him. And it's impossible to begin to walk in the new season. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be not, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in their hearts, but shall believe that those things which they say shall come to pass. They shall have whatsoever they say it. Yes, Hallelujah. Do. So when you speak it out of your mouth and you believe it in your heart, it's done. It's a done deal. You know, and I think about Moses. Moses did not want to enter into the new season. Now, just, just think about that for a moment. Moses brought the people of Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage. And when they needed water, he struck the rock. And water came gushing out. When they needed food, they needed meat. Here came the little quails. Oh, I love quail. Hallelujah. So here came the quail. But then they got thirsty again. And God was trying to take Moses into a new season. And so they came, the Israelites came to Moses and said, hey, we need water. And so Moses 
said, okay, well, we'll give, give you water. And God spoke to Moses and said, don't strike the rock, speak to the rock. Speak to your problems. Speak to those things that you won't change. Hallelujah. But see, Moses didn't do it. Moses would not enter in. He would not embrace that new season. And so he struck the rock again. Now, water did come out. But Moses suffered for that. He was disobedient. He was disobedient. He did not enter into that new season. And when they got to the promised land, God took him up on the mountain and he got to see it. He saw the land, but he wasn't allowed to go in. He wasn't allowed to go in. So now let's turn over to well, Joshua well, chapter well, one. Wait a second, Sherry. Let me just say this, that when he struck the rock, uh, the rock is Jesus Christ. And when he struck it, it was like uh, when Jesus was at the cross and, and he was struck and beaten on the cross. That's right. And then uh, the second time, um, Jesus is not going to be struck and beaten a second time. I mean, the cross is over with. Amen. It has Amen. happened. And uh, this time in the new season, it's a speaking of the word. And so don't strike Jesus again. A lot of people want Jesus to come back and hang on the cross again because they didn't mm -hmm. feel like he did enough for them the first time. Oh, but that wow. will never happen Apple. again because Jesus has gone to the cross. He's not going to go back to it. And what Jesus did was fulfilled all righteousness. Amen. And he brought things uh, to fruition and, and he brought what was needed. We needed healing. We needed, uh, we needed uh, food from heaven. We needed all of that was provided in the cross the first time. So look there, look mm -hmm. for the cross, mm -hmm. what Jesus did on the cross the first time we don't have to uh, wait and and say well we need him to come back and hang on the cross again it's not going to happen and that's what moses symbolized mm -hmm. that he tried to do the same old thing go back right, right. And, and and do it all again and it's not going to happen we have to know when the new season is here and how to operate in the new season it it was critical because it cost uh, Moses being able to go into the new season. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I want to turn to Joshua chapter one, because uh, in verse two, it says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all the people unto, and, unto a land, which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. So God is saying, hey, this is the new season. You're going into a new land. You're going in uh, with the people of Israel. You're the new leader and arising and do it. Go and do it. And so, you know, I call it the green light. Some of you are still in transition. Uh, you're not exactly um, embracing uh, the new season yet uh, because the enemy has tried to bring doubt and unbelief and even some fear there of you going into the new season. Uh, but, le but let me tell you this. Uh, the Lord says, fear not for I am with you. Amen. And it says, and then in verse three, he says, every place, this is what this God is speaking to Joshua at this time. He says, every place at the sole of your hallelujah. feet, hallelujah, and, and receive this yourself right now. Amen. Did you know that you can receive the word right now in the name of Jesus? Amen. Every place that you put your feet, you shall tread upon, and I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of Lebanon and every man. And then he goes down, he says, verse five, there shall no man no person be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I am also with you. And he's saying to you that, he's saying that to you right now. 
as I was with Moses, I'm with you. Hallelujah. I'm with you. Hallelujah. Going into this new season, I am I'm with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you may even be thinking about going into a new business, uh, a new business venture, uh, maybe some new investments. Um, when I talk about season, I'm talking about um, the things that God wants you to be doing. How does he want you to spend your time? Woo! Hallelujah. This is good. That's straight from the my, good. that's straight from the belly right there. Praise the name of Jesus. So he says in verse six, be strong and be of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide the inheritance of the land. Only be strong in verse seven. So God just keeps telling him, be strong, be strong, uh, be courageous. Go, go and, and take the land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even at the end of the chapter in verse 18, the last words. Be strong and of good courage. Hallelujah. So he just keeps encouraging Hallelujah. Joshua and he's encouraging us tonight. Yes. When we when we go into that new season, let's go in with the strength of the Lord. Let's go in with courage and not being afraid of what's out there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the second thing on my list is prayer. When God sends you into a new place, a new land, a new city, a new job, uh, a new activity, prayer is needed. So you need to increase your prayer. And I, that, I'll give you a scripture for that. That's Philippians 4, 6. With everything, do not be anxious about anything. Don't have any anxiety about anything. Freddie, what is that? It's okay. So we are to go to the Lord in prayer and we're going to take everything to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what I did either. Hallelujah. So number two on the list is that increase your prayer time uh, with the Lord. When you feel like you're going into a new season uh, with the Lord, then go, we'll be right back with you. Nope. All right, number yeah. three. Uh, number three is that we need to hear the voice of the Lord. We need to hear what he's saying to us. And the only way we do that is through the spirit. And it says in John 10, remember this, that you are his sheep and you hear his voice and a strange voice you will not follow. And so we know that we can hear from the Lord. And he may give you a scripture. He may give you uh, a video to watch. He may give you uh, something to listen to. Uh, he may just put something in your heart uh, that you're supposed to be doing. Hear the voice of the Lord. That's number three. Number four is that we need confidence in the Lord. And I want to turn to Psalms 118, uh, verse 8. Let's start there. Psalms 118, verse 8. Confidence. We need to move with confidence that he's sending us into this new season and he's there with us. And he's going to he's gonna partner with us. And we're going to partner with him. Hallelujah. To get the job done. In, ver in Psalm 118, verse 8, it says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear what the Lord is saying to you over what another person is saying to you what man is saying to you what is the carnal mind trying to say to you uh that's part of uh, that's part of the man part there 
It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. And then let's go over to First uh, John five eleven. Well, on our way, let's go to Philippians uh, uh, three three. Philippians three three. Now I know I'm giving a lot of scriptures tonight, but I want you to know that that the Lord wants you to enter into the new season. Philippians 3.3. 3. For we are the circumcised of the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. We have no confidence in carnality. And so to embrace your new season, you need to be a spiritual minded person. You need to think the word. You need to meditate on the word. You need to have a spiritual mindset, a kingdom mindset. This is the new season that I'm going into and I'm gonna not trust in man. I'm not gonna trust in the flesh. I'm going to have a kingdom mindset about this. Hallelujah. I don't know if this is helping anybody or not, but I know that it's it's speaking to, to me. Hallelujah. So number one was faith. Number two was prayer. Number three was to hear the voice of the Lord. Number four is to have confidence in the Lord. Woo, hallelujah. Now, 1 John 5.11. This is. And this is the this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. No, that's not it. Um, let's see. First John. Let's see. First John 511. That's what it says here. But we are to have the confidence of the Lord. Just, uh, yeah, that, that's what it says, that, that we are to trust in the Lord. That's what it says there. And then the last one, number five, is that we're to do it with joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. You know, um, it says in, in Psalms 16, verse 11, that when we come into the presence of God, there's joy. There's much joy. We're going to be filled up with joy. And so when we're entering into this, embracing this new season, the more we can come before the Lord and commune with the Lord and talk to the Lord and, and just communicate with him, have fellowship with him, then it's going to be an easier transition into the new season. Amen. Amen. It's 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 going to be a um just a smooth smooth transition into the new into the new season, uh, for instance, I remember Joy and George when all three of my children were were gone. You know, I had three under the age of three and a half at one time, and my ninety nine percent of my time was spent, you know, doing things with them, taking them swimming and and on field trips and teaching them and 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 99 percent of my time was spent with my children and then as they got older and they began to drive and they began to have activities uh in different places soccer and cheerleading and football and all kinds of things just like mary's uh daughter uh is involved in a lot of things um, you know, my time with them was not as much. And even that was a new season for me. You know, what do I do with my time? What do I do with, with, with all of this? And so that's when the Lord began to speak to me about prayer and about being an intercessor and about being a spiritual warrior and and then when they all left the house, then, and, and Brother Fred and I have said this uh, many times, we, it was, we were married 12 years 
before our first son came to us through adoption. And then we were married 14 years before Amy Elizabeth was born. So during that time of 12 years, we fellowshiped with one another. We talked with one another. We got to know one another. And so we we considered that at um, an advantage that when our children all were gone, that we had a relationship, the two of us, and we could talk with one another and share with one another. And it's so important to build those relationships and before things begin to change. And uh, because so many couples, when the children are gone, then they have no, they've lost contact with one another. So I encourage you, whatever season you're going into, uh, just be joyful about it. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Sherry, the uh, verse that you were looking for a while ago was First uh, John 5. I believe it was 17 that says, if we ask anything according to his will. That's it. Will, That's it. His will, we know that we, he hears us and we have confidence yes. to go boldly uh, before him. Then, Thank you. If we ask anything according to his will. Amen. Amen. That's, so that's it right the there. That was from. First John 5, 17. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also in Hebrews 10, 35, it says to do not cast away your confidence. Don't lose confidence in the Lord. Because remember who's watching over you, who needs everything. He knows everything that you need. Yeah. He knows if you need uh, help with something. He knows if you need uh, some peace in your life. He knows if you need joy in your life. He knows if you need financial help. He knows if you need encouragement and stability. He knows all of that. He knows everything. And so it says we're going to put our trust in him. We're going to have faith in him. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. We're going to hear his voice. We're going to have confidence that, that he's the one that's that's sending us into this new season. Yes, Hallelujah. 